All right, Mr. Guessing, we are live. How are you, my friend? I'm doing great, Mike. Thanks for having me. How yeah, are you? I'm excited. I'm doing well. I'm doing really well. We got some sunshine in Ohio today. It's a little chilly, but I'll take the sunshine. It's been a little while since we've seen the sunshine. How's the weather there in Boston? Uh, not bad today. It's quite sunny. I actually was in Ohio on, uh, I think it was Monday. And uh, so I don't know if it was in your area, but it was certainly snowing and raining in Cleveland. So yeah, we're in Southwest Ohio. Oh, it's a beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's funny because normally we do this show and we, we provide agents a platform to kind of tell their transitional story from, you know, where they were at, um, both in the industry and, 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 and from a company perspective, uh, over to EXP. So this will be a little bit different. I mean, I've, I've actually spent some time uh, thinking about some questions for you. And, and, and I told you kind of when we were uh, DMing back and forth that I really wanted to, to set this up to really find out a little bit more about you as a person, because I mean, I think we all know, you know, I think we all know who you are and what you're in relationship to EXP, but we don't maybe don't know a lot about you as a person. So, uh, so I really, I, I'm just going to dig into that. I mean, you and I first met at EXPCon, and it's funny, just a quick story, and and you'll probably remember this, or hopefully you do. And uh, we um, met at EXPCon, and we were in the uh, we were in on. the hotel, and uh, yeah. and I passed you, and and uh, I mean, I knew who you were, and you said, "Hey, Mike," and I said, "I was, I guess, I was a little taken aback because you because you knew who I was, and and uh, you said, "Hey." Hey, I've, I've been listening to this show. I really like what you're doing, man. And I said, yeah, well, we'll have to get you on the show sometime. And you said, yeah, let's do it. And uh, I'm thinking in my head, yeah, right. You know, this guy, doesn't, he doesn't have a lot of time. You know what I mean? And certainly he doesn't have enough time to come on my show. But um, here we are. You know what I mean? We're, we, we're, we're here and, and I've got you live for, you know, the next 30, 45 minutes. And, and I'm excited to pick your brain. Okay, terrific. Was that your first EXP con, by the way? It was because we joined back in February, and so okay. it was our first EXP con. We absolutely had a blast, and, and I'm excited to do it again in Vegas uh, in 2019. Yes, it, they're, they're amazing events, and I, uh, you know, I, Glenn and I talk about it. Back in the first one in Chicago, we 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 probably had about 85 people in the room, and we thought it would never get any better, and uh, they've just been getting better. Ever since. <laughs> Yeah, I, I bet, man. That that they've come a long way, and I'm sure we've got a long way to go. So, um, so tell me, so, tell me about you. Like, where did you start off, like professionally? I mean, how did you? I mean, obviously, they say it takes years to become an overnight success, right? And and so there's a lot, there's a lot in between. You know, Jason, the executive at at EXP Realty, and and Jason, you know, the guy that you know maybe graduated college. So, kind of fill us in there. Where did you? Where did you after college? Wh wh where did you go? What did you do professionally? Um, a great question. So I wanted to be a sports reporter for a newspaper. I wanted to be a newspaper guy. Uh, that was my ambition. And I actually went to college to study that and uh, uh, in a great program up at Syracuse. And at the conclusion of my sophomore year, uh, I, yeah, I'm in Massachusetts. I'm from Massachusetts. I was born in Boston and uh, live about 30 miles north uh, now. Uh, but at the conclusion of my, my sophomore year, I went in to see someone who relative uh, to to be, and he was the assistant to the editor at the Boston Herald, which now is no longer. But uh, he uh, effectively was was not, not going to be viable uh, going forward, and it's something that I ought not pursue. So um, uh, I think he probably was was somewhat accurate about that. Although um, in, uh, in the digital age, there's plenty of uh, writing opportunities and and on sports too. So there. Uh, but anyway, I, I continued my studies and uh, uh, spent a junior year abroad I, based out of London, which was fantastic for me. You know, I, I grew up very modestly and never had a chance to get outside of the country, really. And so that just opened up an entire. Uh, and when I uh, graduated, uh, I started uh, one job at a small uh, boutique marketing firm. That was not a good fit for me. I left, and I left there. And then I went to work for the Massachusetts State Attorney General's Office, which was a great uh, bit of exposure into lawyers and, uh, uh, you know, good lawyers and great people. And it was it was a really amazing experience. Uh, it was not the experience that informed my decision to go to law school. That was that was somewhat different. But I did end up going to law school, went to Boston College Law School, got out in 2002, uh, which was right around the time. Uh, when uh, law firms, at least here, were consolidating and the job market wasn't great at, upon graduation. So I took the bar and I ended up at a great firm down in 
uh, based out of Quincy, Massachusetts, which is where I went, met my wife, uh, incidentally. But uh, uh, they had about 40 lawyers, and uh, largely their uh, client base was municipal. So they had a lot of cities and towns that they would represent. Uh, school districts, uh, some public, and so that was generating a lot of the work. And so I got to do a lot of different things, uh, but it was mostly a transactional practice for me, whether it was real estate or business deals or public construction, public bidding, uh, a little bit of labor and employment, collective bargaining. Um, you know, I think uh, I would say that I I knew pretty quickly that it wasn't something that I wanted to do for the rest of my life, and it, not because I wasn't at the right place. I mean, they were about as uh, enjoyable to be around and understanding of, of work-life balance as a law firm could be. Uh, but uh, just for me, it, 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 I think it was difficult for me to focus my attention on a number of different things rather than one organization, one cause. Uh, and I also think that uh, from a time standpoint, you know, you have to mark incrementally all these, uh, you know, tenths, to tenths of an hour. Uh, not, not something that I was... Um, particularly good. Uh, fortunately, at the same time in uh, 2002, when I was admitted to the Massachusetts bar, I also obtained my real estate broker's li license because it was a fair thing to do. I would go on and have uh, uh, licenses in Maine and Massachusetts as well, excuse me, Maine and New Hampshire uh, at mm -hmm. various times. Those have since lapsed. But uh, uh, business. growing up, uh, some of my best friends uh, were in the business, not on the sales side, but on the development and construction side. And I was always fascinated by that, and uh, frankly, it was it was it, it allowed me to uh, keep my focus uh, in a couple of different places. And I, I so I enjoyed the business. I uh, had a small independent brokerage of my own for a period of time. I affiliated with uh, a company called RealEstate.com, which was uh, a division of LendingTree back in the uh, I guess the uh, mid to late two thousands, and uh, that was a good experience. And it was through that experience that I met. Uh, Glenn Sanford indirectly, and, and he was uh, explaining uh, uh, the EXP model, and this would have been probably December of 2009, so maybe about two months after the company launched, and uh, I was not on that webinar. A friend at the time was was uh, on it, and he relayed the information to me, and the next thing I knew, I was an avatar, and I couldn't get my head around it. For you know, I, I couldn't believe it. I didn't quite understand it. Uh, it was completely foreign to me. But I was at a point in my life where I needed something different. And uh, uh, and at the same time, I understood uh, why being approached this way, because I, as a lawyer, was living a life that, uh, you know, uh, was causing me to spend a lot of time. Uh, my kids were very young at the time. And uh, so I didn't get to see them for successive days uh, on occasion. And, uh, you know, because they'd be in bed by, by 7 o'clock leave at three or you wait till eight o'clock, you get home at the same time. It doesn't matter. So the traffic's that bad. Uh, so uh, that's how I met Glenn. And uh, the next thing I knew, I, I was all in because of, of him uh, more than anything else. That's great. So a couple that's things great. I want to so talk about there. I want to talk about there. You talked about the, you talked about when something changed for you, right? I mean, you, was it the, was it the, Working as an attorney, with the long hours, not getting to see your family, um, just the grind, is, is that what drove you to get your real estate license? Or was it more of, I had some friends in development and you know they had kind of encouraged me and I was fascinated with it, or was it maybe a culmination of both? Yeah, it was probably a culmination. I mean, I mean the, the grind for me, you know, this, and, and again, I, I want to separate uh, you know, the law from the law firm. I mean, they, they were fantastic, but it was always going to be something where the next day I would come in and I would need to bill a certain number of hours and, you know, people would have problems, people would have challenges and, and that's what I would focus on. But there was no real end goal in sight. In other words, there was nothing that I could think about that was, that was big and that could get me up in the morning every day and keep me excited. Right. So that was, that was one part of it. And that, that's true in a lot of jobs and a lot of industries. Uh, the other thing uh, though, you know, I, I always liked the business. I mean, I, as a kid, I had, you know, the erector set just like everybody else, you had Lincoln logs and, and build things. And, uh, in particular, I had uh, a friend who, uh, was very successful in the business there, there, his father was. And, uh, so I would watch a lot during the summer on some projects, uh, learn a little bit along the way. And, uh, I just thought it was an awful lot of fun. So, uh, but uh, getting the license in Massachusetts, once you're admitted to the bar, it's it's really a piece of paper. 
and uh, off you go. I don't know that it's necessarily the best way to screen candidates to be broker because I think the business is very, very different, uh, you're much different than real estate sales. Um, but uh, it was it was fairly simple for me to do it, and I'm I'm very uh, thankful that I did. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And so are we. So you, you know, talk about the. So you met Glenn, right? And Glenn has this idea of this virtual brokerage, right? And you just you couldn't get your head around it at first, right? And and so I'm sure it 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 like like everyone else, uh, you were fascinated by it, and and you wanted to continue to dig in and do your due diligence. And you were at a time in your life where. Um, you know, it was, it was just kind of like the right place, right time, right? It was, it was this idea is pre- presented to you and you're at a, you're, you're at a point in your professional career where you're kind of, you, you understand that, you know, I don't want to do this for the rest of my life. Here comes Glenn, insert story. And then where does it go from there? Yeah. Yeah. That, that's, that's, uh, that's exactly true. There's one other thing that I didn't mention, which at the time I, uh, I've also been a, a real estate investor investor at times uh, in, in a couple of instances uh, with favorable outcomes and in one instance in particular with uh, something that was I'd never want to live through again and uh, involving a building that I was uh, a part owner in and uh, that resulted in litigation and uh, without getting into the details uh, it, it just made sense for me to, to make some transition time uh, but um, so yeah sorry I, and what would, where'd you lead off with that where what was the next so, uh, part? Well, t- tell me. So I think where we kind of where we kind of uh, I think where we kind of concluded the story is that, you know, you met Glenn and it was just it was the perfect culmination of circumstances in that, you know, you were at a point in your professional career where you were looking for something. Uh, you hadn't found your life's passion. And, you know, that that is true for most of us. Right. There's an event typically that, you know, drives us to do or make some, some sort of a, 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 a of a big change in either our personal or professional lives. And for you, so the timing of that story, right, was just, it was just almost perfect. Uh, and so you meet Glenn, he tells you about this, uh, this idea of this cloud brokerage and you couldn't get your head around it, right? And, and, and I'm sure you started, it, would, it, it, it fascinated you enough to wanna to do your due diligence. And, and then where did it go from there? Well, so I, I actually, I could grasp very easily why it, it was being done this way. So I could get my head around, I just couldn't get my head around the fact that I, I you know, was an avatar sitting at a table uh, and they looked a lot different back then than they do today. But keep in mind, I think, and you know, part of what's so exciting about some of the recent developments with the company, with that, you know, I was living a life in, in the law where I worked time away from my kids and, and clients, I'm sure, were paying a higher rate per hour for my time than they otherwise would. Uh, and the people I worked with also were spending more time there than they probably wanted to. And it's because we had this office. And uh, yet when we got down to the work, if I had to do, you know, if there was a negotiation session, uh, uh, you know, a mediation of some sort, it was always offsite. It was never really at the law firm. So uh, there really wasn't a whole lot of purpose for us, an impact on our lives. It had an impact on on the clients and what they had to pay. So I got it right away. I, I understood the impact that, that changing the approach to the business and eliminating uh, and more and some of the redundancies could have. Um, uh, from there, and this is something that I, I really do believe still uh, is true today now that we're uh, Let's see, 2009. So we're, you know, almost 10 years into it. Uh, but at the time, you know, it's very small. I think I was probably on a net basis. I might have been somewhere between 30 and 40 uh, in terms of the agent. And keep in mind, a good number of the holdovers from the buyer tours team, which is uh, Glenn's uh, former team that he had operated in multiple states. So uh, mm-hmm. if you looked at the map, I was the first, other than Vince Hopper in Indiana, that was east of Arizona. Uh, and so I, I saw this opportunity as one that had really not made its way east yet. So I actually was an investor uh, in EXP Realty LLC, which is the uh, operating entity today, but which at the time was the only entity. And uh, that's how we used to do it. We used to have people that uh, effectively help us cover those markets. And uh, so I was the first one in. And I knew what I knew more than anything else, Mike, was that I was not the most credible or respected person in the industry and that what I'm fine people who were. And uh, I looked long and hard at people who had great reputation. They they were successful in the business. They were recognized for their success. And they were also a little the first time 
uh, where I was able to make inroads uh, to a great degree was when I met Tom Somerville and Marion Stafford down in Greensboro, North Carolina, uh, 16-year Remax franchisees, and uh, they had just gone independent because they recognized the way in which the business was shifting. So uh, we spoke for probably months, and uh, hey, Mary, and uh, it was it was terrific. Um, so they ultimately joined, and uh, that was right. really a big moment for validating. Uh, a time where I, I, you know, my belief in the success of the model, because I always believed it made too much sense uh, not to succeed. Uh, that, that was uh, a point that was validated by some uh, two people who I respect very much. So they came over with their entire office. But the company as a whole, in terms of where I went, you know, it's one of the things about startups, and this was my first startup experience. I had many startup experience at all, but one of the things that I re will always remember about it, and I still think it's true today, is that you you lent your assistance whatever it was that you had done before uh if it in any way could be leveraged to help build the company or the organization then you were all too happy to to provide that assistance so for me around and with someone who at one point was an aspiring writer uh, i was able to help edit a website copy for instance i was able to write some things we continued for quite a few years mm -hmm. uh, and i also was able to do a little bit of legal work lowercase uh, l, lower lace, lowercase l, uh, you know, getting us up and as we would decide to embark on getting the licenses, qualifying us uh, to do business. We had, you know, one or two disputes that I would uh, get involved in and, and resolve without, um, it was really a place where you always would just sort of pitch in where you could and where your experience uh, could add the most value. So that was really a lot of fun for me. And uh, I just that it was just so different in terms of you know the avatars and the way in which we were communicating with one another and, and developing close relationships with one another. Uh, I, that that to me, I think, and I think for the agents too today and before, I don't think it's ever stopped being a galvanizing uh, force for the company because we know we're doing things differently, and, uh, and and we believe it's the right approach to the business, and we love the fact that all of that value that has traditionally existed within an office setting with four walls. And to see all of that value, whether it's referral relationships, friendships, um, uh, you know, getting help with a with a question relative to a transaction, uh, I think I think we love that we've been able to restore all of them. Where agents, by and large, are not going into their physical office as much as they once did, if they're going at all. But we've been able to recognize that value, and we've been able to restore it yet uh, in a way that so you know the agent in, in Ohio can sit across the table from an agent in Hawaii, and uh, the Hawaii agent can. You know, we, uh, the snowy world, and it, of course, you know, I'm, I'm alluding to the fact that we now have EXP World. Uh, it's snowing all the time for the holidays, and uh, it, it, it's great. It's fun. So I'm curious, when you made that decision, um, and I assume just based on your feedback, it was y you were you were making a decision, number one, based on the people you were getting into business with, right? You felt like... Um, you felt like these were really good people. In other words, you felt like they knew what they were doing. You, you felt some sense of safety in being able to do that. And secondarily, um, you believed in the idea. But was there any part of that at all that was uh, maybe a little bit, felt a little bit scary or risky to you? Because, you know, you have this, you have a law degree, right? You're practicing law and you have a, you know, you have a 40 hour, we say 40 hours, probably more like 80 or 90. Um, you, you have, a, you, you have a, a, a job where you're getting a check, right? And then you have this idea that, you know, it may or may not work. Talk about, was there any struggle there with, with, with making that decision? Uh, uh, not with the decision, but in, in the aftermath, I can tell you for a, uh, for a long period of time, it was very, very challenging uh, to the point where I remember telling Glenn one day that I was my life in the same way that we were approaching the business. In other words, we were going to be as lean as we possibly could. Mm -hmm. And uh, my wife at the time was actually home full time. She was not working. Uh, she was with the kids. And so, yeah, it was uh, salary, health insurance, all of that was gone. And uh, it was a real struggle for, for a period of time. But uh, Christina, she she uh, supported me and allowed me to continue and, and persist with it. But uh, yeah, it was, I, there were, I didn't have any apprehension about the decision. I can I can sort of, you know, but uh, uh, I, I felt great about the decision. I knew it was going to work. I knew I could add value. Uh, but yes, it took a long time and it was painful. Do you, do you, the, the, the great thing about your journey really is that, you know, we have these, 
we have these career stops, I call them, and 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 it seems as though we learn, um, you know, something at each one of those stops. And certainly, you learned something um, in your career as an attorney that is serving you still today. But talk about, you know, I, I'm curious when you when we talk about success habits, right? We talk about these are the things that you do persistently every day. Um, talk about maybe some of the keys to your success as it relates to, um, you know, maybe some of your daily habits or your morning routines or anything or something you do persistently and that you do really well. Yeah, I, I find that the difference between a great day and a good day is whether or not I get to exercise in the morning. So I try to do that uh, as often as I've a high ankle sprain recently. So it's been very, very frustrating since September, but I'm, I'm finally feeling a little bit better. But that, that to me is really important uh, just mentally. So uh, that's definitely a practice. I, I'm very careful about what I eat. Uh, in terms of avoiding foods with additives or refined sugars or, or processed foods. Uh, and I've been living that way now for probably the better years. Uh, I think uh, importantly, too, I've learned about myself that, you know, I, I can, I, and I hope this doesn't come across the wrong. I can really sell something effectively if I believe in it 100%. And uh, I didn't know that about, about myself. Uh, but I, I think for me, Every day I say to myself, am I excited about what's happening at, at EXP? And if, if, if I'm not, then, then I should stop. And uh, I remain more excited uh, than I have ever been. The other thing I will say is, you know, we, we celebrate numbers a lot uh, in the company, right? Whether it's agent count, 15,000 agents recently, uh, or what I, I find it to be healthy not to really look too much at the numbers. So I've never really focused too much on the numbers. Uh, I just focus on what I enjoy doing. And the, the greatest gift in all of this for me is that uh, I get to, I, I've been able to meet and get to know so many amazing people in all parts of the country. So, um, and, and in Canada. So got great, great friends, uh, both north of the border and here now. And that's, uh, that's something for, for me and for my uh, disposition. Uh, that's critical. I think that was an element that was missing from the practice of law, which is there wasn't a whole lot of interpersonal interaction uh, on a daily basis. Um, unless you were trying to solve a problem on the phone and called you about. So uh, I, I miss that, and I really need that in order to be happy. And so our environment, our platform allows me to do that. It gives me that opportunity, uh, and I get all and uh, uh, interface and interaction uh, from being around people that I need uh, in that world. Yeah. Do you think you – do you ever take self-inventory, and, and, and are you ever like, do wake up and you just have to pinch yourself about what's happened. I mean, with crossing 15,000 agents, the type of impact that EXP has had on the real estate industry? Well, I do take self inventory, but I, I was, I was advised uh, one of the, one of the things I remember from law school and in, in my third year, I was in a, uh, I think it was a partnership tax class. I know, don't get too excited. It, the, uh, <laughs> the professor said, if you're going to take inventory, you know, do it once a year. Don't spend every single day of your life saying, am I in this position? Am I in the right spot? Is there something better for me? Do it once per year. Otherwise, you'll drive yourself nuts. So I do do that. Uh, but I think what, what you're talking about excites me and where, where I don't know if I pinch myself, but I, I say to myself, isn't it incredible? Uh, are the stories about people who have uh, gone on to to achieve financial security or in some cases great wealth as a result of what we're doing and the opportunity that Glenn has created uh, and and that I've helped uh, along the way. Uh, there are a couple of specific examples where where people have either either made a small investment way back at the beginning to see it uh, grow into something very very large, uh, or they've paid off their mortgage. Uh, and are now living, you know, debt free. I think Nicole Charles out of Madison, Wisconsin, did a post about that uh, recently. So, those are the things uh, when you know the magnitude of the impact that uh, this company and the model and its people have had on folks. Uh, that's when you get really excited. Has what's driving you changed at all? I mean, you you obviously you got on the bus a long time ago, right? And 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 circumstances change, uh, things change. We know that. But are are you still driven by the same thing, or has that changed at all? Uh, you know, I, I don't know that it's changed I, because I just think there's so so much. Uh, you know, within workplace, for instance, we've just started 
very informally and casually a, a, a conversation group about international opportunities, right? Mm-hmm. So um, I, I think I think what motivates me, what drives me still, uh, is the excitement. I think as we've grown, as we've migrated to Nasdaq, uh, that comes, and so maybe just a bit more cautious uh, and deliberate about things as as they're done. I think the company is, and I think I probably am too. Mm-hmm. Uh, just always about uh, a greater impact, but uh, for the most part, uh, what drives me still is the excitement, and and I, you know, I hope that never changes because uh, ten years has gone by in a blink. So, what do you? I mean, obviously, technology is changing our industry, right? I mean, it, and 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 I'm curious for you, what do you think the next three, five, ten years looks like in real estate? Oh gosh, you know. Uh, I don't know exactly. There are people far smarter than I am that can probably provide you with a better answer. I will tell you that, um, you know, I, I took a, a, a virtual reality tour with my Oculus headset that I bought for my son uh, of the, out in uh, Colorado. Uh, and that was just an amazing, amazing experience. And uh, so, I mean, there's, there's so much that can still doesn't seem like it's slowing down anytime soon. Uh, you know, what it looks like in the future, I don't know, but I do believe strongly that uh, it involves the agent. It involves really good agents and it's tougher to survive uh, in the business because you're going to have to be more and more creative in the ways in which you find value. Um, and I think that's been true for a number of years, but even more so time. But I think, uh, you know, particularly, you know, as the, as the, as, even as the market maybe starts to turn, as some are suggesting, uh, I read that in the, you know just the other day. Um, I I think you know it, it will be those agents who really understand their local market, really understand how to provide good customer service, and who can really be that guide and support uh, to the consumer. Uh, they'll be in the business for a very long time. I don't I, I don't personally see that change. Sure. Do you think technology and and maybe it is to some extent already? Do you think it will change the agent's role in our industry? Right. You broke up there. Just say that again. Yeah, no, I I said, do you think that um, and and this may be happening already to some extent, do you think that technology will change the agent's role in our industry? I think it already has. Yeah, I think I think it already. has. I mean, I I think, uh, you know, all of the envy and the exclusive possession of the agent or the agent population there is. And so you have a a consumer that's uh, less dependent upon the agent for information. Uh, maybe there's less of an allegiance until the time where the consumer is ready to pull the trigger. And I just, just think you need to find uh, additional ways to stand out. And, um, you know, in the uh, uh, you know, companies now where you can go um, uh, direct to the consumer uh, below and send offers or, uh, or others and, and discount models. But um, uh, yeah, it's it, there's no question it's changing the industry, and I think that uh, the consumer's uh, information, the wealth of information that the consumer has in their possession, has driven that from day one, and, and probably will continue to. But again, uh, I, I'm probably not the knowledgeable person to to predict where the industry is. But I, um, it's uh, it's been fun to watch, and it's been things that you know if we look at our company, and, and there are people in the company 19, 20, 22, whatever years old. Uh, and then you have people on the opposite end of the spectrum who still love the business and who still want to stay in the business, whether they're brokerage owner or transitioning over to the company so they can scale, uh, or people who have just been in it forever. They love working with their clients and they look all around them and they see that it's changing and know they want to uh, remark. I'm curious, Jason, what are your thoughts on, and and are you guys talking about this at any level? Are Are you... What are your thoughts on imitators? So brokerages, like I've heard that Keller Williams is is working on a um, working on a virtual system for their expansion teams. What do you think about that? Well, I think your your comment uh, uh, earlier uh, call here was uh, insightful, which is that people follow people, right? And uh, I followed Glenn. Uh, some have been so kind as that they follow me. Uh, and I think that ultimately, at the end of the day, it's not just the technology that we have in place. Uh, it, it's the fact that we're able to build 
uh, and we're able to support one another. You know, our company values, which I think have been in place from the very beginning, but which we memorialized last year, um, you know, they really, they really say it all. And I think that we live them. And I think that this is a completely different, uh, fundamentally different uh, culture because people that just want to help in any way that they can because they're the shareholders of the company. And uh, this, this comes up again and again. Just this week, I was uh, Spanish-speaking agents, and they were trying to figure out how both uh, they could fill a, a perceived void maybe uh, that exists for uh, Spanish-speaking professionals in the industry generally, but also for consumers. And then, you know, just, just brainstorming and thinking about it and, um, and take that up. And they come to me just to discuss it because they think it can help the company and and they're all too eager to help the company because they're custodians of the company and they care about it and they safeguard it and they're in furtherance of its best interest. It's as much of a different theater as anything else. Is there anything, Jason, that is there anything that's happened um, as a result of is there anything that's happened, you know? To, with EXP, like the idea, everything you guys put together, is there anything that's come out of that that, that wasn't expected? And, and I'll, I'll, let me just share my story really quick before I let you answer that, because we we obviously, we moved over in February and, and, and we moved over for so many different reasons, but one of the reasons we weren't expecting was the collaboration. And to me, that has just, it is now moved to the top of the list to, to where I'm able to collaborate with some of the top agents in the United States. So is there anything for you um, that, that stands out that is a byproduct that maybe wasn't expected? Yeah, I think you know, as much as, as the model always made sense, uh, just the caliber of the folks that are joining us, you know, we just had uh, Randy join us up in Canada this past week or two, five others, and the people that are number one market uh, top teams doing boxing. Ah, we lost you, buddy. We made it 32 minutes without a technology blip, and uh, here we go. So hopefully, Jason can jump back on with us here in a minute. Sound like he maybe started to have problems with his internet. There he comes. Are you there? Hopefully Jason can jump back on with us here in just a minute. Thank you, David Bloom. Appreciate the, uh, appreciate the feedback, brother. And Mary, thank you as well. Let's see if Jason's going to be able to get back in here with us. Pam Swift, thank you for watching. We'll give it just a minute here, guys. Eight viewers. Hey, guys, thanks for watching me. Just me. Um, I'll have Jason right back. We're uh, experiencing some technological difficulties as we uh, normally do it appears so just give it a minute and he should be right back on i'm hopeful it looks like he's jason can you hear me i can see your side of the screen now but i'm not sure if you can hear me there you are uh, you're right back you. my friend all right can you hear me let me try this again i'll, I'll reload I I got, I got you, I got you loud and clear, my friend. Now we got a, we got a big, bright ball of sunlight coming right into the camera, though. Anyway, we're, um, we're ready to get started. We, we've still got people watching. And my last question to Jason, and hopefully he can jump back on here, was, um, was there anything that was a byproduct of, 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 of of EXP, you know, he and Glenn's idea, uh, and, and then when he got together with Glenn, was there anything that came from that, that they weren't necessarily expecting? And I talked a little bit about, 
you know, um, why we joined in February and, and, and what we were thinking when we joined and then, um, you know, what actually showed up in terms of the collaboration and so forth. Um, thank you, David. Appreciate it, brother. Um, keep the comments coming guys. And uh, hopefully we'll have Jason back on here in just a moment. He's having some, uh, some technical difficulties, but hopefully we can get him back on here. Uh, and if not, you know, we'll be able to pick up the interview. It looks like he's able to jump back on here. Jason, are you there? Yeah, sorry, Mike. Yeah. I, I don't know you what are happened. To sorry about you that. You are totally I'm fine, I'm also man. noticing the light is pretty bad here. The, the sun is coming in. Do you want me to move or are we good? Yeah, why don't you – can you drop that blind on the uh, – on to your left side? Just drop – is there a blind huh, there? I didn't even know we had blinds. Hold on. Yeah, let me go do that. <laughs> You learn something every day. Nice. All right, my man. We are back. And thank you all for hanging in there. Appreciate it. Um, this is well well worth the wait. I, I can assure you of that. All right, hard. brother. Yeah, we are back. We didn't skip a beat. Um, so just re quick refresher. Um, I had told my story about, you know, the 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 collaboration showing up as something that we weren't necessarily intending. And now having moved to the top of our list of reasons why uh, we love being here. So I, I, the, the same question for you is that is there anything that's shown up that that maybe you not necessarily were expecting to show up as a result of, you know, uh, of EXP? Yeah. So I, I, and I hope I'm, I'm hearing the question. Uh, I, I think the, the caliber of the agent uh, has been just off the charts. I think that uh, whatever challenges we encounter as a company from time to time, they're all challenges that, that other brokerages would love to have. And I think, you know, what I've, what I've learned and what I didn't anticipate is that when somebody like Brent Gove comes over or somebody won't start naming names, but, but how much and how badly these guys want to collaborate with one another. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. these top teams, these top agents, they, they have always uh, masterminded uh, together. They have, have shared ideas and, and hoped for each other's respective success in their market. Uh, but uh, what I did was just how excited they would be about the opportunity to do it together under the same umbrella. Um, and, uh, and they have every, op every reason, every opportunity, every incentive, uh, to do that here as, as fellow shareholders and as people both, you know, teams, people running teams, as well as brokerage owners now. I mean, this really, you know, we talk about the brokerage owner opportunity uh, in your state on Monday. Uh, I met with a, a broker owner and she confessed that, you know, after 30 years in the business, she's making capital contributions along with the other two partners on a week, on a monthly basis, right? So um, not only is there not cash coming out of the business, but they continue to put cash in. And wow. uh, if we start to think about, about the market shift again, uh, you know, EXP is the model that allows somebody who's been in the business for 30 years and who everybody respects, allows them to go out and really local market areas. So that's true for teams. Uh, it's true for brokerage owners, which I think is why they're making the move. And it's, which is why I think we have a great opportunity uh, for people to, who want to stay in the business. It turns uh, they can do that here and we think we can help them succeed. Um, but, uh, and it's also the same opportunity for the individual agent. We put the individual agent in the shoes of the brokerage owner effectively, but without the cost, without the liability, uh, but they can go out and they can build an organization right. themselves, uh, across all markets. So talk about, you know, we, we found out at EXPCon about the acquisition of Rubella and, and, and I know, you know, you can only share probably so much, um, what are your plans? I mean, to, to the extent you can talk about them uh, with the acquisition of Rubella. Well, I think, the, you know, the most exciting thing about the acquisition of Rubella is the people that we're in business with. I mean, Dr. Alex Holland, I don't know if you had a chance to meet him, uh, but uh, I mean, he's just an, an incredible human being and somebody passionate about not just the technology, but the human behavior uh, that go, you know, that you can, the, the behavioral elements, the, the, the human uh, piece, the uh, I just think, and from the first time I ever met him, I just think he's an incredible guy. Um, and, you know, of course, this all just happened, right? And Glenn's the visionary. So Glenn, I'm sure a, a very, very good idea of what it all uh, looks like or could look like. And I'm here to support that. 
but if I experience to not to not to go back to something I already covered, but what would life have been like, or what could life be like uh, for a lawyer uh, in a law firm that's expected to build a certain number of hours in a year, um, and uh, you know what 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 could it mean potentially uh, if they could do it from home or from a location that works best for them, not sacrifice the family time, uh, not have to put in the time to travel, uh, maybe drive down some costs for the firm overall so that they can charge clients less and clients can get a better deal on legal services. I mean, I, I just think about that, and that's you know that's not uh, that has nothing to do with what we're planning or you know, but I, I think you know. The, the, the truth about just about any industry is that uh, brick and mortar is expensive. And, uh, you know, I think as we go forward that uh, in, in a number of different industries, companies will be evaluating ways in which they can achieve the collaboration uh, without necessarily having that expense. Yeah. So I know, that, I know that's evasive. So, but, <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I appreciate you yeah, sharing no, as much I, as you can. I, Talk about... Um, because you mentioned brick and mortar, right? And and certainly the brick and mortar uh, offices are are still players in the game. But long term, do you think that um, do you think that cloud brokerages like EXP will have an impact on those brick and mortar offices, um, like your you know your Berkshire Hathaway, your Coldwell Banker of the world? Um, do, you, do you, what do you see happening there long term? Well, uh, so I didn't I didn't hear all of it, but I. I, uh, I mean, if you look at, I mean, uh, just about everybody who's come to us, including all of these top folks, were with some other company previously, and 99 brick and mortar uh, operation. I think the impact on brick and mortar are, are, is our cloud brokerage is going to impact brick and mortar. I think they already have. I mean, you know, I, I question, uh, and I, and so. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think the impact is profound. I mean, we, we've got people that, are, you know, are, are closing their doors and, and saying, I don't need the office anymore. And they've come over to EXP and they found great opportunity here to grow and, and thrive. Uh, and individual agents who, who were top performers in, in their office, wherever that might be, uh, see the opportunity here too. And, and uh, that's, that's certainly an impact. I mean, people who have been with a company for 20, 30 years uh, making the decision that it's time and they're pivoting over to us. Yeah. So obviously, you and Glenn look uh, through a different lens, and and there is a there's a complementary piece to your relationship, uh, and you know that's why you work together. So, and I'm sure if I ask Glenn this question, he would have a completely different answer. But what are your personal goals for the company, Jason? I I think uh, you know one of the things, Mike, that's always excited me most uh, is, is the idea. Of people from all over the world, uh, in our campus, uh, you know, in the snow, on a boat, uh, dancing, playing soccer, whatever it is that they're doing, transacting business, developing referral relationships. Uh, you know, you could you could be in a market or a part of the world that, you know, uh, objectively someone might say that is you know ten or twenty years behind uh, in terms of where we are today technologically, and 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 or, or maybe we're behind, uh, and so. I think the idea that you can have people speaking different languages, uh, yet working in harmony uh, alongside one another as fellow shareholders and learning from each other, I think that's really a very, very compelling story. I think that becomes the story uh, at some point, particularly given the state of things in the world and and uh, you know everything that we read about on a daily basis and the nature of the discourse uh, that goes on in, in the public and, and just how it's deteriorated so much. I think the idea that you could have people from all corners of the globe Working together, trying to build the best company they can as fellow owners. Uh, that that if I get to see that come to fruition. Yeah, you know what I was thinking about on the way over here. I was thinking about, and I'm not just. I'm, I'm, this may already be happening. For all I know, we're not doing it, uh, but maybe we should be. Is um, I was thinking about like, you know, having having buyer consultations or listing appointments in the world. Do you, have you guys thought any, any any about that, or is there anybody doing that? Thought about it, sure. And uh, the folks I mentioned before, Tom Somerville, you know, way back in the day, he actually, I remember, brought a cons uh, who was relocating from the West Coast to North Carolina. And, you know, it's the same information that he could send in an email, but he pulled it up on one of our display boards. And, um, you know, uh, so I, I think, uh, you know, we're not we're not heavy in the commercial space by any stretch, but I think uh, I think there's a lot of value in that for a company that maybe considers relocating and is looking for new uh, physical space. 
Um, I, I think there's a lot of a lot of ways in which that could uh, be of value to consumers in a number of different areas, number of different in, uh, in buying different products, different services, um, and uh, but uh, uh, nothing specifically that we've discussed. But uh, I, I application. Well, I'm curious, and we'll wrap up here because I, I know um, uh, I usually run about 40 to 45 minutes, and this has gone by so quickly, and I have a million questions for you. Um, okay. Is there anything? Is there anything that I ask you that I that is there anything that I haven't asked you that I should have? Uh, oh, I I think you're I think you're doing great, and feel free to ask away. It's a, it's okay. We got time. Yep. You know, I, 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 we think about like, you know, we think about the current state of real estate right now. And, and, and obviously we want as, as agents at EXP, we want to continue to do business like we did, but we also want to share the story um, and, and the model about EXP. And so like for you, Jason, what do you think, like, what, do you, how do you think that should be done? Like, do you think, do you think, what are you all encouraging? How are you all encouraging agents to share the XP model with other agents at other brokerages? Well, you know, back uh, earlier in the year, I guess it was maybe around. Uh, so I, I don't remember exactly. We released our our uh, guidelines, you know, our pledge, and uh, certainly want to make sure that anything anybody does uh, reflects positively on the right things, uh, you know, and and specifically. You know the opportunity to really build a better business using the tools and the systems, whether it's KV Core. Uh, that that's really what what should be focused on, and that's where the emphasis should be. And if if we focus on that, if our agents focus on that, then then everything else will just fall into place because then there's these other additives of the model that that uh, are are great. They're very very attractive, but they can't stand on their own. They can't stand alone. Uh, so I, I think that's where where the the focus is, and I think that's where the focus ought to be. And I think we we think about that a lot, and and uh, trying to make sure that's the case. I also think that uh, you know love to love to be able to equip all of our agents with the tools and and resources uh, that can help them present the model in a way that we know is accurate and, and well balanced and uh, very very effective. And I'm, and uh, that's not that issue. But I I look about the uh, you know sort of think about the progress that's been made since. Uh, February on, on this, and, I, and again, you know, fellow shareholders, um, all of them wanting to do the right thing for the company, and so they're all too eager to to to, to listen and to contribute ideas, and great progress, and we'll continue to. So one thing I wanted to talk to you about too um, is the training, right? So we 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 understand that, and and I was listening to a podcast on the way in that was talking about you know, um, quote unquote, brokerage training, right? And, and, and in most cases, when you talk about brokerage training, you know, you're talking about um, how to write contracts. It's just very, it's just, it, it's very menial stuff, right? And, and, and even with Keller Williams, because I came over from Keller Williams in February and we loved our time there and they did train extensively, but the, the, the challenge with the, the training at Keller Williams is that the training was only as good as the person training. And, and what I mean by that is, you know, we would have um, we would have this class called Ignite, right? And people would come in, different agents would come in and teach that class. And, you know, what the challenge was that some of those agents didn't know the material as well as we did. So, you know, we you kind of hit a ceiling. And the great thing about the training model at EXP is that you know, with the collaboration and the agents who are doing some of the trainings uh, in EXP world is that, you know, it really raises the bar. And I think I think that people should understand that, you know, when you can come together and you have, you know, a Kyle Whistle or a Jay Kender or a Dan Beer that's doing a training, these guys that do, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars in, in transaction volume, what is that? What do you think that means to that guy or gal or that broker who is um, who is who is maybe considering or doing their research uh, on EXP? And and then and then second the second part of that question is, what are you guys doing uh, as an executive team to make sure that we continue to um, we continue to to encourage and grow that out? Well, I think Kimberly Ryan and 
Anderson or in tandem. I mean, I I think they're they're constantly looking at, at additional ways in which to enhance the training, and I think that the, the training is robust and it's diverse. But in fact, just came on. You know, Hank of Inc. was with Vanessa Nunez and Keith Bliss and uh, having one of our weekly eye conversations uh, sessions. And I think those sessions are of immense value. And if I think back to the training uh, as it's been in place in the company over the years, it's always been an effort, uh, the, uh, largely a volunteer effort by our agents who want to share and understand that there's a, a benefit to seeing your fellow agents succeed. So I think that'll continue. But I also think about the expand program and what Kimberly Ryan has done there. Uh, relative to mentorship, those things, and I, I just I'm blown away by it. I'm absolutely blown away by it. I'm I'm blown away by the uh, generosity of people within this industry generally who want to teach and want to share. Uh, I, I mean, I just I just think that's incredible, and I think it's even more the case uh, at EXP. So, um, uh, you know, in terms of future plans, that I'll defer to Kimberly and Brad on that. But I just think they're phenomenal people, and I know how much they care about the agents, and I know how much they want to see them succeed. Just know how much uh, time and effort they're putting into developing the best curricula that they can. Yeah. Well, man, I have really enjoyed my time here this afternoon. I so appreciate you uh, spending some time with me. And I know you're a busy guy. I really do. But I also know that there are a lot of people out there who really want to learn more about you. And, um, you know, so I'm, I'm excited to be able to provide that platform for those folks and, and for myself uh, selfishly. So, you know, I want to ask you what what is you know we talk about the future right and and you know obviously we, we want to continue to see the growth and we we're excited about where exp is going is there is there anything out there any other components as it relates to technology or workflow or anything like that that you guys are investigating um or 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 thinking about as a value add and, and what i mean by that is you know, the great thing about being here is that um, as a part of our technology fee that we get conversion, that we get Skyslope and we have access to all these different tools and resources. And in enterprise, we have, you know, we, we have all the marketing material. We literally have all these things at our fingertips. Is there anything else, though, that you guys are are looking at that you can talk about that that we may be able to get excited about? Uh, I, I won't, but I will tell you this, that uh... On, on a daily basis, uh, including today, I've got a text message right down here from somebody that that uh, has got uh, you know a product that they want to bring forward. Sean Thomas, I mean, I, I can't believe actually, yeah. I mean, let's talk about Show Me Now, right? Uh, yeah. Which is developed by one of our agents, uh, Sean Thomas, out of Sacramento, um, and uh, we've just completed the acquisition of that platform too, um, and it's it's amazing. And uh, so there there are things that are people are coming forward with all the time. There are people within our company who are developing things. And there's uh, people like Sean and, and an entire team that are taking a look at them and evaluating them. And I think, how is this going to improve the agent's business? That's always the fundamental question. And um, uh, so uh, nothing specific, uh, at least not for me, but uh, I, I do know that it's a constant around the clock effort to figure out uh, what is the latest and greatest that uh, might help our, our agents. Well, I, I figured that, and, and I, 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 I so appreciate you taking the time out, like I said before, because, you know, we as agents, right, it, you know, we, we work um, every day uh, to try and serve our clients, right? And, and you all take on a different, and, and from a team leader perspective, we are, sometimes our clients are our agents, right? But you all have the weight of all of that on your backs, and you all have done something that is um, it, it just, it never ceases to amaze me. Um, and I'm so glad to be a part of what you guys, what you guys are doing and the platform and, and the model that you've put together for us. And I'm excited to, to, to see what the future holds. What is, what, what do you guys, what do you want for the agents that are out there? Like, you know, grinding every day, the guys that are, you know, that are in the trenches, what do you want because this was all done for them, right? I mean, Glenn was an agent that grinded every day, right? And he wanted a, he just wanted a better platform. He wanted a better model. And he was actually, a, from what I understand, was a KW guy too. But what, is there anything else that can change? And maybe I, I don't know if I have expectations for change, but is there anything else that can change that maybe um, 
that could help encourage agents to continue to grow or to, to, to do more business? Anything else that I'm not, not asking you? Um, I'm not sure I understand that. It, 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 and part of it, it cut out. So just. One, yeah, well, let me just simplify one, the question. Is, is there, so for you guys, is there anything else that, you know, as agents that, that, we should be using because I mean, I think people move for a specific reason, right? And and we can talk about revenue share, which is just a fantastic opportunity to add in additional passive income. We can talk about, you know, stock to a certain extent. Is there and, and this question means I guess different things for different agents, but is there how do we translate that into something that we can impact other agents' lives with that aren't necessarily at EXP already? Uh, you know, I, I think there are always going to be things that agents need, agents want, and agents either don't have or uh, it's challenging for them to have access to those things. Uh, they could be tools, they could be technology, they could be quality of life issues, uh, they could be all sorts of things. And uh, uh, I think the future is uh, incredibly exciting. And uh, I think, you know, we'll see what uh, uh, Glenn says. You know, he said since our, our second shareholder meeting in Bellingham that. We want the value proposition for the agent to be so compelling and so strong that it would be uh, uh, professionally for an agent not to affiliate with the company. And uh, that remains true today. And, and so we'll see what happens what out here in the coming months and years. Uh, but uh, I think the, you know, the, you, you were kind with your words uh, there, but uh, you know, really what the, the, the big, big secret here is that this is all when the agents have created this, the, the agents, have come up with ideas. The agents uh, make sure that people are doing things the right way. The agents are sharing. The agents are teaching people what it is that they know. They're helping people succeed. The agents are being mentors. Uh, the agents are having faith in the company to do the right thing. Uh, the agents have built the company. So uh, all 15,000 plus, and, and they're the ones who really deserve uh, the congratulations. And, and uh, it, it blows my mind to think about what they've accomplished and uh, we'll continue to accomplish. So um, we'll, we'll keep looking at it and uh, I'm sure there'll be no shortage of voices telling us ways in which we can improve and, and hopefully so. Well, I'm sure there won't be. And, and, and Jason, uh, again, thank you so much for spending a couple minutes with me here this, uh, this afternoon. I'm, again, I'm just excited. I'm humbled to be a part of, of what you all are doing and uh, I look forward to reconnecting with you here down the road um, at the shareholders meeting and then again at EXPCon in Vegas uh, in 2019. It's humbling for me too, Mike. I really appreciate it very much and uh, I hope you have a great holiday. Thank hey, you. Hey, you too. Talk to you soon, Jason. Thanks so much. Okay. Bye-bye. You bet. Bye-bye.